Happening today, Defense Secretary, excuse me, Defense Minister Khalid bin Salman expected to visit the White House today, right after Riyadh condemned Israel's move to expand ground operations in Gaza. But former White House senior advisor Jared Kushner just came back from Saudi Arabia, and he says the Saudi people want to see the end of Hamas. Uh, one of the ironies is that uh, as an American Jew, you're safer in Saudi Arabia right now than you are on a college campus. The people of Saudi Arabia have a lot of care for the Palestinian civilians, and so they'd like to see, um, you know, Israel accomplish the mission to, um, to, uh, to, to make sure that the Hamas could be eliminated. They're against terrorism. Yep. Joining us now to discuss and expand on this is co-chair of American First Policy Institute Center for American Security, Lieutenant General Keith Kellogg. Uh, General, how significant is this meeting today with the Saudi defense minister and our White House? Hey, Brian, thanks for having me. Well, it is very significant. And, and the reason why it's so significant right now is, remember, when President Biden came in, he called the Saudi Arabians, it was a pariah state. So his relationship with MBS, Mohammed bin Salman, who is the crown prince, and he's the designated sort of, you know, heir to the, the King Solomon, they've got to get those relations back together, and they're not really good right now. And they're going to be key, because what's happened is they, were, they tried to normalize relations, they, the Israelis, between they and Saudi Arabia, but the Saudis are backing away from us a bit. Look what that deal they just had with Iran, where they kind of come in with a, a peace agreement. That was brokered by the Chinese, not by the United States. So it's very, very important that the president, when he talks to the defense minister of Saudi Arabia, he gets his message across that, you know, we're with you, Saudi Arabia. We need you to stay in, in line with, with uh, Israel and come together on this negotiation, having some type of a peace agreement. You know, you had Jared Kushner on a minute ago. We were very, very close with the Abraham Accords, with bringing the Saudis on board uh, in supporting the uh, Abraham Accords. And we think that if we had a second term, I think we were, would have been there right at the very top, because that's where Jared was right at the end of the uh, administration. So are they key? Absolutely. And they're key. To, they kind of hold the rest of the, the middies together. And we need to really support them, and they need to support us, especially the, the way it looks right now with us pushing back on Iran. Right. And by the way, it's not dead yet, uh, expanded talks, because Iran contacted Saudis right away after the attacks on October 7th, but it was a lukewarm conversation. There was no real big readout, because the Saudis recognized that Iran's the problem. But let's see where this goes. Maybe they're going to wait for another administration. I want to bring you to what happened in Russia in one of their provinces. This pro-Palestinian rioters right. seem to go, they got word through Telegram that there was going to be a uh, Tel Aviv, uh, Israeli Jews were coming uh, back in to Russia, and they stormed the gates. This is them going through the terminal, and this is where this is, the security was there, and they're going after women and children who are Jewish. This is just the latest example of riots breaking out around the world against the Israelis, against the Jews. Lieutenant General, what is this, the 1930s? Yeah. Yeah, Brian, you know, this is a messaging issue right now, and the President of the United States need, needs to get right in front of it, and he needs to be very vocal about it. You see it here in the United States. You saw what happened at Grand Central Station in New York City. You're seeing it on campuses. Look, there is an issue of moral certitude here. That when, the, when the Israelis say, and we said in 1945, never again, we need to mean that. And the president needs to be the chief spokesman by telling everybody, this is wrong. This is not a Palestinian issue. This is a Hamas issue. This is a terrorism issue. And we need to separate the two. And people need to understand this is unacceptable. And not just behavior, but for the, globe, the global effort as well. Everybody needs to come on board. This is wrong. And he needs to use the moral servitude issue as the punch as the punchline to, to basically push back on it all. But He's General, where does it. it where does this come from? Where did this organization pop up? You mentioned too, yeah. they have t-shirts, they've got prefabricated posters, they're getting together at Grand Central Station, blocking the Brooklyn Bridge, taking over Columbia, Cornell. Where's this coming from? Tulane? Yeah, I, you know, Brian, I you know, you'd like to pin it on one person or one thing. I think there's a general attitude out there that people just protest anything, and this is wrong, and that's the reason why I think their strategic messaging is so yep. critical, where the president needs to stand up and say, this is wrong. This is a moral certitude issue. We said in 1945, never again, we're back to never again. Even Benjamin Netanyahu, the prime minister of Israel, said the same thing. We're into our never again issue, and, and we're also saying this is an existential threat to Israel. He's right. All right, we'll get into the actual fight uh, later in the week. Lieutenant General, uh, Lieutenant General Keith Kellogg, thank you.